I'm Karen Holton and welcome back to my nine step workshop series called Quantum Health Transformation. This is a free workshop being offered on YouTube, also Facebook and you might see it springing up other places, I don't know. Um, today's session, by the way, each point on here, which I've already covered in the introduction, is being presented in descending order because I like to start at the bottom and build a bit of a foundation and it makes the work up here much easier. So today is step nine, black, introduction to nubby ball and light dark integration. So I'm hoping you've seen the primer. I will be putting out uh, a primer as well as a live video presentation for each step. The primer has the notes, the detail, more detailed information, um, things written down so that you can just pause it as you go along and make your own notes or um, re-watch whatever you want as, as many times as you want to get the gist of my information. And so this is the live video that accompanies the primer. So both are step nine black, but this is the, the live presentation. Welcome. Okay, as I mentioned in my primer, things started out where I had a, what I would consider a misunderstanding uh, that was social with a friend of mine. I had been sick for some time and I had been, uh, was finally out going for little walks a little bit longer every day and I'd been fairly isolated and one day when I was on one of, one of my little walks I noticed a friend I hadn't seen for some time and I waved hail and hearty at my dear friend thinking we could get reacquainted and perhaps spend some time together and lo and behold if the friend just looked right through me as if they didn't know me and kept going and I was heartbroken and I went back home and I went well wonder what I did wrong what did I do and why did this person respond that way to me so in my next meditation session I asked my guides to please um, help me to understand what was going on and this is what they suggested that I do they suggested that I create a sphere in my mind and this is a, a circle, but you can imagine a sphere which goes out this way and behind as well. I thought of why my friend had reacted the way they did. So my guide suggested that I plot a point anywhere on the sphere and basically think about what it is that I thought had happened. Okay, number one, my friend is avoiding me, is what I thought happened. Then on the opposite side of the sphere, I tried to imagine what the opposite reason might be. Now, of course, none of this is accurate, and that doesn't matter. It still works just the same. So number two was, I thought, well, maybe my friend didn't recognize me. I'd been very ill. Um, I was in a whole different place. I was deep within recovery, um, quite different than the fat and jolly Karen that people used to know. And although I often recognize people from my past, they don't recognize me because I look so dramatically different now. So really, this could have been what happened, that my friend simply didn't recognize me. So then my guide suggested that I plot a few more reasons just to try to flush out the possibilities around this social interaction. So I thought, okay, well, let's plot one here. My friend was distracted. So perhaps my friend saw something bizarre happening behind me or something they couldn't figure out, and that took all their distraction away from me. And then I plotted on the back side of the sphere or opposite nub. My friend was deep in thought. Many times I've been very deep in thought and I haven't recognized people or perhaps observed common social customs because of being so far away inside my own mind. And so this very well could have been another reason. So then um, again we plotted a couple of more and that was my friend was um, dealing with a crisis. I don't know about you, but when I'm in a crisis, similar to being distracted, my mind is, a, is not really all there. I'm busy feeling overwhelmed or so emotional or trying to figure out what I'm going to do about a crisis. So easily it could have been that. I mean, hopefully not, but it could have been. And then on the other side, my friend was concentrating on something else. 
I can remember when I was um, practicing to do, I was um, involved in some theater work, and I was having trouble remembering my lines at the time. And so what I would do is put my lines, uh, recite them, and then put it onto an MP3, onto my MP3 player. And while I was out going for a, a walk, I would listen to um, the script and say it out loud so that I could remember my lines. So, I mean, probably that isn't what happened with this friend, but it could have been something like that. So there was lots and lots of reasons why this friend didn't respond the way I expected. But pretty soon what happened is I realized that every situation is like a nubby ball with infinite nubs and infinite possibilities. And the truth, I couldn't figure, no one can really figure out exactly what's going on. We can't really imagine what a motive, a true motive, and all the factors that cause that motive and where that person is going in their stream of reality. So to look at things as a nubby ball takes a lot of the emotionalism away from the issue so that I can just see things as they are or maybe even as they aren't. But the point is I'm closer to truth if I look at a nubby ball than I am if I think my friend is just avoiding me because I said or I did something wrong. Nubby ball works for lots of things. So if I could just carry on a little bit more. Oh, I also want to reiterate uh, from previously, if I can find my sheet here. If you haven't already done so, done so pause it here. Type these uh, letters and symbols into your browser. Take a look at uh, my story and lead into the nine steps to show how I ended up coming up with all of this in the first place. And also, I would really recommend you watch these shows. Zeitgeist Addendum, Thrive, Paradigm Shift, and anything from Spirit Science. It will show you how everything within my workshop actually harmonizes and links in to the greater issues and things that are going on in the world right now. Really worth watching, won't cost you anything, they're for free on, on YouTube. Definitely check, worth checking out. Okay, getting back to my friend's behavior, we're now going to take this uh, to another example level. I've always been fascinated with religions. So many religions, and everyone believes that their religion is the only religion that's true, and that all the others are false, and it doesn't matter what religion you step into, you find this is true. And I would even classify science as a religion. Um, more on that later. That's outside of the scope of this talk. But I just want you to consider a few things. Um, and again, this is just an example on how you can use a nubby ball to see the bigger picture about things. So I call this understanding religion. I put at the top theocratic. Theocratic means, which would be like the North Pole, okay? And theocratic means God rule. So it means that everything that's real, everything that's not real, everything that's done or not done is completely controlled by what they believe in their religion God wants them to do. Down here I've got scientific. And scientific is a complete absence of God or spirituality, at least so they would like us to believe. And everything scientific has to be proven with the scientific method. And so One's the North Pole and one's the South Pole. So we often in our reality think of things as this or that, black or white, up or down. But no, things aren't really like that. They're nubby balls like this. And so what I've done is plotted a few possible uh, religious um, points on here so that you could get an idea of of what, what really is, um, I can't say truth, because that's so subjective and it's such a loaded word, but closer to the bigger picture, let's put it that way. So up here we've got total reliance and belief in God and that God controls everything, and down here we've got scientific. And both of these are belief systems that lots of uh, intelligent people believe in, so it's not um, really that far-fetched to look at the two poles. 
most religions will fall somewhere else within the ball. So you may have one over here, which might be very, very much God rule. Um, Jehovah Witness, Jehovah's Witnesses, um, Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, a lot of the fundamentalist religions fall in here. But not just within the Christian paradigms, also in the Muslim, Hindu, and in every other um, belief system. And then you also have um, religions that are more down here, where there's a lot of independence allowed to thinking, and those would be those would be things like Buddhism and um, other belief systems, which allow a lot of um, free reign, as if you will, uh, or not really free reign. I guess divergence from believing in in, in the controller. And this down here is more into more of a natural um, system. Sorry, I'm not exactly good at this yet, but I will be if I keep trying. I'm pretty sure of that. Okay, so around this center, so you'd have you'd have basically a belief system here and a belief system that corresponds on the opposite side. So it's kind of like having poles all over it that are that are sort of opposite, but n that none of them are meant to be viewed independently. So once I started plotting a lot of the different belief systems, spiritual belief systems, on a nubby ball, I went, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They're all part of a bigger picture. And so some people say, oh, um, religion is like um, an elephant. Um, one blind person approaches it, no disrespect to blind people, but this is just for analogy. Uh, one blind person approaches the trunk and gets one idea of what it's about. Someone else grabs a hold of the tail and, and they get an idea of what it's about. And someone else may maybe a foot or, or an ear, and then that's what they think that it's about. But where is truth? or? some commonality. It's, I believe, at the center. And I think all of these link into the center. And I've got here at the center is, is the common threads, or are the common threads. Like, harm none and, and, and treat others well. Every belief system has a harm none component to it. The Christians uh, have the do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Um, the pagans have harm none. Um, a lot of scientific, uh, what I will call belief systems or religions, believe in harming none. It's really quite common. So I figured that if you take the common threads from the different religions and you unite them at the center point, which is where they all come together as one thing, you then have a little bit closer to truth. So only by educating yourself as to what a lot of these religions or belief systems are about and finding the common threads, can you really see that they're part of one nubby ball? Yeah, that's what I think. So getting on a little further with this, I want to just show you, over here I've got a light shining on a nubby ball. Because not only are all things connected and all things stem from the same source, but also they tend to have in our world, because of the dichotomy that we've been brainwashed into believing, good, bad, up, down, we tend to have a light side and a shadow side, okay? So keeping that in mind, we'll take a look at the next page I have ready here. And this is light, dark contrast. So, let's take, for instance, and this is just an example. This is not meant to praise or condemn any belief system or any system of order on this planet. Not my intention, okay? So let's just take a look at law enforcement, the positive light aspects. Law enforcement soothes the population. Individuals believe they are safer as a result of law enforcement. Many, 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 many people believe this. After all, let's take a look at some of the facts. Number one, um, law enforcement fights crime and it provides civil and national defense. What's not to like about that? Number two, it ensures public safety by enforcing safety rules and regulations, keeping the peace and maintaining order. So a lot of people would say, well, gee, what's not to like about that? And then we've got number three, it's the um, law enforcement agents tend to be the first responders during a crisis or a disaster. 
And that would go for national uh, defense as well as civil defense. So when there's a problem, boom, these people are there right away to help. And number four, a lot of fundraising is done by law enforcement to help out with good causes. So now we're looking at the light side of a nubby ball. Many, many infinite possibilities and components and things to consider when considering the topic of law enforcement. And this is a good thing. But then let's take a look at the shadow side. Law enforcement as a negative or the dark aspects of such. It disturbs the population. Individuals recognize the oppressive results. Oppressive results, you say. What kind of oppressive results could there possibly be to law enforcement? Well, just a few things to consider. Number one, it's a bureaucratic system that expects guilt and is heavily influenced by propaganda. So this would be a little bit like the guy who gets hired for a job and his boss just takes one look at him and says, hey guys, he's fat and lazy. He's not going to work out for this job. And every time the boss comes into the room, the guy sitting down confirms the belief of the boss that his employee is fat and lazy. But the truth of the matter is, this guy works like crazy. He gets everything done he's supposed to get done and in good time. And he has a few extra minutes to take a break now and then so that he can uh, replenish himself and go on and continue to work hard for this boss. And he can't figure out why his boss can't see all the good work that he's doing. Okay, same thing goes with this. Law enforcement expects things to be wrong, expects people to be committing crimes, expects people to be doing things they're not supposed to be doing. And so from the eye or the perspective of the law enforcement officer, they're always looking for negativity. And when you look for something, you're always going to find it. And that's on the dark side of the nubby ball. So this leads to police brutality, um, lawful but erroneous uh, persecution, and a really good example of that is medical marijuana. It's bizarre. In this country, being Canada, uh, marijuana is both legal and illegal. If you have a doctor's prescription and your doctor believes it's good for your health, and if you do the appropriate paperwork, which is impossible to do because the policies are constantly shifting, you then have a legal right to use marijuana. But if you don't, you're a criminal. And if you get caught growing it or selling it or sharing it or even using it, depending on the officer, you could end up um, having to go to court. Fortunately, very few people in Canada go to jail anymore for small marijuana infractions. But in the United States, you could have one state where people are growing it in their yards and enjoying it freely, and in the next state, people are still going to jail for the same thing. So this is just a bit of an example. Next is manipulated by organized crime. Organized crime permeates pretty much everything. But if you are a law officer and you are asked to turn a blind eye and the safety of one of your family members might be, in, might be, um, might be secure or, or they might be harmed depending on you turning a blind eye to something or not, what are you going to do? I don't know. I'm not saying any of this is right or wrong. This is all strictly from my imagination. But the point I'm trying to make here is that there is a dark side. Number two, embedded within an economic construct, it actually, uh, law enforcement actually encourages crime. You might go, wow, that's pretty off base there, Karen, but consider, law enforcement feeds a glut of institutions and service providers. We've got courts, we've got lawyers, we've got prisons, we've got bureaucrats. We've got insurance companies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that all depend on a law enforcement agency. So the more these people find criminals, which is what they're looking for in the first place, um, the more they do that, the more they're actually boosting the GNP, which is the gross national product, which um, is a measurement of how healthy the economy is of a country, but also how healthy the country is. It's considered um, very healthy, anything that boosts the GNP. And so the health of the economy depends on lots of illegal activity to be sifted through the court systems and the prison systems and the insurance companies and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
And then the final point uh, on the dark side is erosion of personal rights and freedoms. So this is not really just a light and dark pole we're looking at. I'm showing you the light pole and the dark pole. But in reality, every nub between those two poles is a possibility. And this is to get you thinking in terms of the bigger picture, not just a polarized this or that situation and way of thinking. Okay, so now I want to, um, before we get into light and dark integration, because this is sort of the, the introduction to it, I want to show you two books that are super important if you get a chance to read them. I think you'd love them. One is The Denial of Death by Ernest Becker, and this will help you to get a clear understanding of the collective unconscious dark side of the nubby ball. Not literally the nubby ball, but the round sphere of everything we experience in modern society, especially in North America. Um, another book I've got, these are both featured in the primer, Meeting the Shadow, the Hidden Power of the Dark Side of Human Nature. And this is a collection of very short, um, I don't know, papers and stories and experiences written by psychologists and psychiatrists and sociologists and um, probably anthropologists, you name it, all kinds of professionals have written pieces about integrating the light and the dark side. Because if we don't do that kind of integration, we're pretending it doesn't exist. Whoops, my ball ran away on me. So what we're doing without integrating our dark side, we are simply pretending the light side is all we have. But it doesn't work that way. The dark side will make itself known, whether we like it or not, and usually plays havoc in people's lives. So I'm going to give you um, an illustration, a very easy way to get in touch with your dark side. And believe me, this work is not for cowards. It's fairly disturbing what we're capable of when we get honest with ourselves. But until we do that, we don't really know ourselves. We don't really know where we want to go, what we want to change, and how we can make things better. And so what I would suggest you do is take a child's toy like this or draw yourself a sphere on a piece of paper or imagine one in your head and pick a point. Say, oh, I'm, I'm generous. I'm a very generous person. Now I want you to look at the other side. Mm, where are times or where can I think of as examples where I wasn't very generous, where I could have helped somebody and I didn't? That's a good place to start. Then you want to go with your other um, qualities that you think are your glowing qualities that you represent as a human being here on earth today. Okay? So take a look at it. It could be loving. It could be affectionate. It could be uh, loyalty. Anything. Take a look at what you think you are and then take a look at what the opposite of that might be. And I'm not saying that you're a rotter behind closed doors. That's not the point at all. Um, we all have times where we're a bit of ashamed of things we've done and we're really proud of things we've done, but the reality of it is we are an entire sphere. We are a nubby ball, and each one of these nubs in this case represents um, different um, elements of our character. Um, later on, if I get um, people wanting to know more information, I'll do an advanced workshop on Nubby Ball, um, helping you to be able to flush out just about anything you want to think about um, and to understand it more fully. Now, the downside of this is um, when we start to see ourselves as whole beings capable of pretty much anything we would, we've seen uh, huma humanity involved in, is it's harder to lay blame on other people. And you could just say, well, you know, that's one nub on their ball. And it's actually kind of depressing that you can't scapegoat and blame other people for things. Um, coming to accept that we're all very imperfect and we're all just doing the best we can with what we have and what we've been through in life varies differently, greatly from individual to individual. And at first it's a little depressing because you go, wow, okay, everything that's happening is meant to be because it all makes up part of the whole. And it can be actually quite depressing for a while. But what happens is you come to accept it, and once you come to accept it, then you can just let it go. 
Now, I want you all to know that, to be perfectly honest, I have an internal asshole. I have an internal whatever you want to give name, negative names to different kinds of undesirable people. I have all of it in me, and I don't like most of it. But if I don't see it, how am I going to change it? How am I going to work on it? And it isn't about being perfectly wonderful all the time, as opposed to being terrible all the time. It's about realizing that we have areas that need work, and we have areas where, you know, maybe we've been working long enough on and we need to take a look at some of these other areas. It's about balance. It's about perceiving more than what we've traditionally been taught to believe. Black, white, good, bad, normal, abnormal. No way. You take any two points, those are the poles, the top and the bottom nub. What about all the other nubs? Oodles and oodles of place. And then not to mention there's a huge neutral zone around the center where things are really not good nor bad. They just are what they are. And so I hope this little demonstration has helped you to see things in a more fractal way. Um, it's interesting because not only is each aspect of ourselves that we want to look at a nubby ball, we ourselves are also a nubby ball. And everything that's nubby interlocks with everything else. And so what happens is we soon realize that we're part of something much bigger than us. And it has good aspects and it has bad aspects. But the point is, it's balanced and at the center is closer to truth than we could ever know. And only by examining several of these points can we come to this realization. So another use for the nubby ball is pretty soon we start to see things flushed out and then more complex. And we also see how they interlock with each other. Every nub becomes a nubby ball in, on its own. And every nubby ball is within another nubby ball. And I'll tell you, the whole good news about all of this is at the center there's balance and at the center is mm, I'm not gonna say neutral because that wouldn't be true either but it, it's basically the source of all things and so we start to think in more complex terms and we start to um, express ourselves in more complex terms. And what happens is we start to evolve, we start to change, and pretty soon we don't need to scapegoat people anymore, we don't need to blame people anymore. And bigotry dissolves, and conflict dissolves, and we can have genuine respect and appreciation for everything we come in contact with. Not just the things we think are good and that we personally approve of. We get to accept everything and when we do that we start seeing things as they really are and so instead of seeing a person as this or that or as in a, in a stereotype we're seeing them as very complex and it's so much easier just to say namaste I honor you I salute you for the work you're doing in your world please honor and respect the work I'm doing in mine so I hope that's helped you a little bit that's step nine of quantum health transformation. I know some of you are watching this because you want to see, oh, how did Karen lose all the weight and keep it off? And believe it or not, this is all part of it. Changing the way I thought was fundamental to changing the way I looked. So I also want to show you my contact information one more time for those of you that are interested. Um, my email, quantumhealthnow at gmail.com, or you can actually write to me. I have a post office box here. My name is Karen Holton. The um, address is 20016 RPO Downtown, Courtney, B.C., Victor 9 Norman, um, 0 A is in Apple 7. And if you want to send donations to help me with my work and then I can upscale my production a little bit more and maybe get it out to more people, please feel free to send a money order to me, Karen Holton. But if you don't, I hope you enjoy the series anyway. And thank you so much for watching.